Oh hey, welcome back. If this is your first time here, my name is James and this is Killing It Country. I have nine videos behind me and I have all sorts of ideas for the future and I'd like you to come along. So if you're not signed up or you're not signed in, do so and hit that like button and hit that subscribe button. Subscribing to my channel is gonna do a few things. It's gonna tell YouTube that the content I'm creating is interesting and it's gonna put that content in front of other people so they can decide if it's interesting for them as well. So you're here for a review of the Kubota BX2755 HD front mount snowblower. So stay tuned, because I'm going to tell you exactly what I think. And at the end of the video, there'll be a little something extra, a little teaser, a little hint of what's to come this spring. Let's do it. we have to have a nice wide forest road. All right, so here we go. This is my 2016 Kubota BX25D. I do have the backhoe that goes on this. This is Kubota BX2755 HD front mount snowblower. If you follow my channel, you know that I just finished putting a gearbox in this. This gearbox up here with the worm gear. I uh, have just recently replaced that. Uh, that's video number nine in the series. Um, I'll link to it here if I think of it. Um, so this is my snowblower. I ran the tractor with the loader arms and the bucket to clear snow for the first half of the winter in 2016, 2017, and it was okay. Uh, it's a little labor intensive. You spend a little more time outside than uh, you would normally want to spend. Uh, this took longer to come in than the tractor did uh, when I got it. I was happy to have it, no doubt about it. It definitely is quicker, uh, but it's not perfect. But what is perfect? What's the perfect machine to do any job? As soon as you think you find the machine you have to do the job, you end up uh, wanting a machine that's bigger. So, what's good about this thing and what's bad about this thing? Um, when I looked at these things, they tried to sell me on the BX2750. Um, whether that's because they thought it was a better option for me, or whether it was because that's the machine they had in stock. I, I don't know. Um, when I compared the specifications of the two machines at the time, uh, the main differences were the, uh, the 2750 only had three fan blades on the second stage fan, and this model has four fan blades. Um, obviously, 2755 versus 2750, uh, the model that I have here is five inches wider. And I was happy to have as wide a path as possible being cleared by the tractor uh, as I move ahead. So I went with this model. Uh, the gauge of the steel is thicker on this compared to the 2750. This unit uh, attaches to the tractor using this uh, intermediate uh, quick hitch adapter. I'll throw a picture up there of the front of the manual so you can see that. Uh, it picks up on 
the same hydraulic couplers that the loader uses. So when you use your controls in this direction, down, which would normally be to lift up your bucket, well, it's going to lift up the snowblower. Um, opposite, you go to put your loader down, well, it's going to drop the snowblower. And you can use the float position on the lever, just like you would with the loader, to get the snowblower to follow the contour of the ground as you're moving forwards or backwards. Um, the side-to-side -side controls on the loader, which would normally be for tipping the bucket on your loader up and down, are now used to rotate the chute on my machine. I have a small hydraulic motor right here that uh, has a gear underneath that cover and uh, rotates this guy. Bunch of snow on there. Let's see if I can show you that gear. There's a couple of gear teeth right there that you can see that rotates the rotates the chute. Um, the deflector on this guy is actually electric. And as you see it right now, this is not the way that this came from Kubota. I'll show you some pictures uh, right here of the uh, way this was set up when I ordered it. The, the actuator here, the electric actuator, was actually mounted onto the side of the unit. Let's see if I can find those marks. Yeah, right there. You can see the, the paint mark from Kubota where they did their measurements and drilled that hole to have this thing up here. Where's the other one? There's the other one right there. Um, the problem that I was having with this was that uh, with the uh, electric actuator mounted on the sides, on the one side, what you're actually getting is uh, an, an unsymmetrical or an uneven application of forces. And uh, the big hinge right in here was actually bending. And, uh, you know, I, try, I adjusted everything. I tried to see where I could see it dragging, um, trying to figure out what's going on with the thing, and it bent. So I contacted them. And after a lot of exchanged emails and arguing, uh, they did actually replace that under warranty for me. They weren't able to actually just replace this upper section. They had to replace the whole thing. It's one part number, which I thought was a bit ridiculous. Um, the way you see it right now, this is actually a Kubota bracket. And uh, maybe I'll fire the part number up there for that if I can find the receipt. But that's actually the way that they should all come. You have this thing mounted exactly in the center so that you have an even application of forces on that hinge. There's no binding. I haven't had any issues with this whatsoever. Um, the switch to run that electric actuator is uh, right over here. Just a up-down switch. I kind of thought Kubota would mount something, you know, on the end of this lever, like an up-down switch or something like that, but mm, not so much. I actually have to take that switch off and flip it upside down because now it's kind of backwards um, the way it was before. If you flick the switch up, it would extend the cylinder and it would push the chute up, making the snow blow higher into the air. But now, when the cylinder extends, if you look at the way that's oriented, it's actually going to push up on that upper bracket, which is going to tip it down. So it's backwards. I have to fix that. Um, in terms of its ability to move snow, it can definitely move some snow. No doubt about it. Um, follow the manufacturer's recommendation in terms of uh, the RPMs you want this machine to run at. It says that they want you to be in the upper end of the RPM range, and I 100% agree with that. You need this thing moving as quick as possible, um, both to move snow quickly to make sure that whatever snow ends up back in there by the second stage fan is going to be ejected from the machine as quick as possible, but also because these are oil baths in these gearboxes. So your lubrication depends heavily on um, the oil that's carried from the bath to the top end of the gear to make sure that everything's lubricated properly before the gear meshes. So the faster the gears are moving, the more oil that's going to end up where it needs to be in order to lubricate all the moving parts the way that they should be lubricated. Um, what else can I tell you? I'm probably going to uh, pull this uh, snowblower off of the tractor for you. I'll take it all apart and uh, let you see how it goes together and how it attaches with the quick hitch and how the PTO links up to the tractor and everything like that. Uh, so for now, 
let's maybe go move some snow. Oh, one other thing I did want to mention, I had mentioned that this tractor was the BX25D model and it has the backhoe on the back. The first couple of years I left that backhoe on the tractor, um, I now realize that was a mistake. It's too much weight on the back of the tractor, it takes too much weight off of the front tires, and it can make this thing difficult to steer when you're trying to move snow. Now that I've got the backhoe off and I just have that uh, that uh, CBX48 Bush Hog box blade installed, it's, it's allowed a little bit more of the weight to come onto the front tires, which helps with traction immensely. I can now steer this thing much easier. I'm able to get away with not having chains on this thing. And if you've looked at putting chains onto one of these BX tractors, you've probably come across a, uh, a forum on the internet somewhere that says they don't recommend it because the chains can um, the chains can do a little bit of damage to the four-wheel drive train on these things. Whether that's true or not, I have no idea because, like I said, I've never had chains. But, uh, yeah, let's go move some snow. So you can see there's a good bit of snow there. Um, I don't know how much. Maybe a foot, a little more. Let's go set this up down here for you guys. If it'll stay. So I've taken this thing off the tractor because I want to put the loader back on, and I have. Uh, I've just lined all of the different components up here on the ground so that you guys can get an idea of how this thing actually runs. Um, this guy here, which is a BX2751 uh, quick hitch, hangs off the front frame of the tractor itself. It's got a very short section of PTO in it. There's a spline here, it comes forward, a couple of grease nipples, 
and then you have the forward output for the PTO shaft here. That small section of PTO shaft is driven by this longer section here. Hooks up to the, the PTO output on the tractor underneath uh, the seat, kind of between the two rear tires. Drives forward, drives through that, and then uh, this guy here couples up into there and is able to lift the snowblower off of the ground by that uh, hydraulic cylinder. Uh, talking about maintenance a little bit, uh, the maintenance is pretty straightforward. It's all grease nipples and there's two oil baths, but this reduction gearbox gearbox on the back here, I'm not thrilled with, to be honest. It's uh, It does have a drain plug, but the drain plug is not at the bottom of the gearbox. So if you were to superimpose a clock on the back of that gearbox, you would think the drain plug would be at the six o'clock position, which is the bottom. It's not at the bottom, it's at like the five o'clock position, which is crazy. Um, Kubota, if you're listening, uh, when oil shavings and contaminants and that kind of stuff settle out in a gearbox, they tend to settle out at the bottom of the gearbox, and it would be ideal to have a drain plug at the bottom of the gearbox, so that when you change the oil, you can get all of the contaminants out. Because right now, if there's anything in there, it's just going to be sitting at the bottom. You're also not able to change all of the oil in the gearbox, unless you were to tip the gearbox up on its side. Um, so maybe they've addressed that in newer models. This one was built in 2016. I'm not sure, but uh, that would be my only gripe, I guess. So would I, would I recommend that right there? BX 2755 HD Kubota front mount snowblower. Yeah, I'd recommend it. Stay up on top of your maintenance. If it says every month you need to top up the gearbox oil or check it, then do it and top it up. You know, I was probably stretching that stuff a little bit more than I should have, which is the reason why my uh, little gearbox failed on me. But uh, it's been a really great unit. It's a lot quieter now with the new gearbox. So if you need one, you should definitely look at it. I don't know if it's necessary to get the heavy duty one. I did, you could probably get away with uh, the BX2750 or whatever model numbers they're going with now. There's all sorts of different model numbers. They change from uh, the States to Canada. But uh, if you have any questions about the snowblower or the tractor or anything, feel free to leave a comment. I'll either follow up with you in the comments or I'll make a follow up video, that's no problem. Uh, thanks for your time, thanks for tuning in. Uh, thanks for your likes and for your subscriptions. And uh, here's a little teaser of what's coming this spring. Take care, guys. We'll see you in the next one. Oh, hey. Good morning. These look pretty nice, don't they? Hey, It's the right color. What do you guys think? What's the best model of mini excavator from Kubota? <laughs>